So it's been about a year since it became really obvious that there was something wrong with The Last of Us Part 2. Like, there were people like me saying that the game was going to be shit, like, back in 2013 when The uh, when the Last of Us Part 1 came out. And people seriously started talking about the sequel, right? Um, but I, I think, I don't think most people were really quite as attuned as I was about how terrible this thing was going to be. Like, The Last of Us Part 2 blindsided people with how awful it was like people were like making entire live streams like tearing apart certain scenes uh, certain character interactions certain plot points there there was a lot of drama going on and and um well it was well well deserved for the most part like of course there are those like angry joe who will try and come out and say things like oh man abby is a good character uh, it, it still has that naughty dog polish this is still like one of the best games of 2020 but tw uh but in reality no, like, The Last of Us Part 2 was a complete piece of shit, was not worth anyone's time, and I think has completely destroyed the reputation of Naughty Dog and PlayStation's first-party development in ge developers in general, which is a good thing overall, because, like, th those developers were never good and never deserved the reputation they had to begin with, but uh, it, it's nice to have, like, a really solid sort of <laughs> understanding that, like, this is where it all ended. This is where it all came to an end. Like, The Last of Us Part Two, like, um, complete piece of shit. So, um, why am I making this video now? Because, <laughs> interestingly enough, uh, we're kind of in a... There's still quite a lot to discuss when it comes to Last of Us Part Two, like uh, the development of the game, uh, its release, and I think the way the developers handled the release, um, the way the game was received by the media, specifically Neil Druckmann, who is quickly becoming a really interesting figure at Sony PlayStation. Like, a clear... <laughs> this is a clear... This is a motherfucker who clearly has had everything given to him due to his nepotistic connections with people in the industry. He sees control of Naughty Dog in spite of, like, no real skill. He had a bunch of uh, game journalist cohorts, like, try and damage control the game as best as they possibly could. And yet, despite, like, the, the 10 out of 10s, despite, like, all the positive coverage, in spite of, like, Colin Moriarty trying to call it, like, one of the best games ever made, like, in, in spite of all of this crap, right, in spite of all of it, the game was eviscerated by fans. It was it was destroyed by critics. It was hated by actual players. And there is a good reason for that. The game, simply put, is not good. The only people praising it, the, the critics, the game journals, the YouTubers, are downright shills. They are trying to convince you that this product is good so they can continue getting benefits and payouts from Sony. That's the only reason these games get any positive coverage at all. It's it's not something new to The Last of Us Part Two. It's something that's been going on since like the 90s and Final Fantasy VII and why so many people didn't talk about how, how it was a clearly a downgrade from six and, and five and four. Like there it's been a it's been a central point of Sony's con Sony's uh, marketing tactic uh, tactics from the beginning is to sort of sort of control the gaming journalism industry and like force them to sort of cover their products in a positive light regardless of like the actual quality of them which is why you don't really see anyone really bring up blunders like layer or PlayStation move and in, in the current year whereas you'll have people like bitching about wa uh, Wii remotes and <laughs> and the Nintendo GameCube uh, years after the fact right um, Neil Druckmann, because of like his nepotistic connections, has everything at Naughty Dog. However, he can't make people enjoy his game, and I and I think this is like what's gonna bring him down eventually. Like uh, what's brought him down already, actually, because uh, he keeps acknowledging like the haters on Twitter, his 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 critics, like the detractors, like uh, people who don't like the game, who are constantly like noticing new things about it, who are constantly taking jabs at him. Like Neil Druckmann thinks he made a masterpiece. And it makes him incredibly upset whenever anyone brings up anything negative about it. He has nothing nice to say about people who don't like his game. And and I think that's a that's a really that's a really strong indication that this guy is completely out of touch with like what what 
what he should be doing as a creator, right? Like he's not he's not like really acknowledging that he made a mistake or that he made a he made a misstep or that he needs to like reevaluate reevaluate his priorities going forward. No, he's doubling down and trying to tell people that like, oh, you just don't understand it. It's it's too deep for you. This <laughs> this is like Evan Gillian mixed with like <laughs> this is Evan Gillian entire man. You you can't possibly understand you can't possibly co- comprehend its complexities and layered and layered storytelling. It's um it's um seeing him do this like again and again and again it, it really just strikes me just how desperate this guy is to try and like turn the reputation of his game around like he really wants people to like the last of us part two and all i have to say to that is like next time actually make a good game